So as a lot of you might have seen, the new version of D5 Render was just released, version 2.3. Let's take a look at some of the new features contained inside of this new release. All right, so you can see all the new features contained inside of version 2.3 by going to this forum post right here, which I will link to in the notes down below this video. But there's a bunch of really interesting additions that have been added in this new version. All right, so first off, let's open up D5 render, you can see how they highlight some of the biggest things on this front page right here. So first off, we have the new clouds and fog effect. This is an effect that's gonna allow you to add clouds and fog to your renderings. And so under geo and sky, under weather, if you if you check the box for clouds, notice what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to control the amount of clouds that are created in here. And these are kind of like volumetric clouds in the background, but you can adjust things like the thickness of the clouds using the sliders, as well as the density of the clouds. So how dense they are and their height. So the height is going to allow you to move your clouds up or down. And notice how when I move this down in my scene, it's actually like in front of the camera in the scene right here. So you can use this in order to add a bunch of clouds using your environment really quickly inside of D5 Render. So one cool feature of this effect is if you check the box for cast shadow, these clouds are actually going to cast shadows in your scene. So you can actually use this to cast like realistic cloud shadows in your scene. So the more clouds I add, notice how you can see the shadow on the hill right here. So this is a really cool cloud effect for working inside your models. And so in addition to the clouds, you can also check the box for fog in order to add their optimized fog effect to the scene. So notice how if I adjust the height right here, that's going to add fog to my scene and you can add things like fall off using the slider right here so you can have it a little further in the background the more you turn the fall off up the more the fog is going to get closer to your window or closer to your camera inside of the scene and so this is actually really easy to work with um, as it as fog effects go and it really helps you kind of set up that fog effect inside of your scene you can also adjust like the color of the fog in here as well. So again, just adding fog and clouds using the weather system inside a D5 render um, is really easy to use. So another cool feature they've added is the ability to adjust the sun radius. So if I go into my sun settings and I set this up so I can see my sun in the scene, by the way, it's very cool the way the sun is like reflecting off of the ground right here. But if you click on this little three dots and click down, Notice what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to adjust the radius of the sun in the sky. So you can make the sun kind of a point or you can also make it bigger right here. And I might move my clouds down just so you can kind of see what this is doing. But notice how the bigger this is, the more that's going to affect like your fog effect. So I might toggle my fog off in this case, but you can adjust the size of the sun radius using the sun disk radius slider right here. All right, so first off, I want to take a look at the round corner effect. Um, as a lot of you know, rounding off edges is something that can add a lot of realism to your models. Well, um, now you've got an option in here to click on objects. And if you scroll down inside of the model, so I've got this bench selected, there's a checkbox down here for round corners. Well, notice how as soon as I check that, I get this beveled edge on the corner right here. So what that does is that gets rid of the sol the corner that comes to a point in here that can make those renderings look a little bit less realistic. So notice how I can adjust this radius in order to make that corner larger or smaller. So this is something that it's actually really easy to add realism to items inside of D5 Render. So another example is let's say I was to just select these stairs right here, toggle on round corner. Notice how it gives me a nice bevel around the edges in here. And while this doesn't seem like a big thing, it's actually massive because it's something that really makes your renderings look a lot more realistic without having to do really any additional work. You just toggle a checkbox. So I'm actually really excited about this because it makes this so easy. All right, so they've made some improvements to their grass material. And so basically this is a material you can apply to surfaces inside a D5 render, but they've adjusted it so that you have the ability to adjust things like the height of your grass you can also add trim, so you can basically make it look so the grass is, look like the grass is cut, as well as adjusting the density of the grass that's applied as well. So having a grass material that you can apply to a surface without having to mess around with like painting or anything like that is especially helpful. Um, you can also adjust things like the color 
of your grass using this slider right here. So we can make this kind of a darker green or something like that if we wanted to do that. Just kind of depends on what you want to do, but making those adjustments is really easy inside of D5 Render. So notice how you can make this look short or tall, anything like that. You basically just select a surface and apply the grass material to that surface. All right, so next up, we've added two modes of style renderings. So let's say that we go into our effect tab right here. There's now options down here for AO and outline mode. Let's look at outline mode first. So what outline mode does is it basically allows you to add outlines around the edges inside of your scene. So you can adjust things like changing the width by distance. You can adjust where those lines show up like this, but you can basically set this so that you can create almost a cartoon style rendering in your scene. So let's say we were to do the same thing over here and we want to turn on outline mode in this scene. We can adjust our line width up like this. You can also check the box to add a background like this with a color. So when you do that, that basically turns off your textures and gives you the ability to create this outline look. And so this gives you some really interesting opportunities for um, different stylized type renders, and it's really easy to do. You just check a box. So you just check the box right here or toggle the thing, I guess. Um, you toggle that background on, and then you can adjust things like your line width right here. And you can adjust the colors of those lines as well if you decide that you wanna do that. So that allows you to um, really kind of get in here and create this sketchy style in here. Um, you can also adjust things like your background color, which is really going to affect the um, feel of your scene. So in addition, you've also got the AO mode or the ambient occlusion mode. And basically what that does is that's something that gives you almost like a depth on your render. So a lot of the time you're gonna to wanna to kind of couple it with the outline mode. Um, and then what you can do, and let's go to a different scene right here, but if I toggle AO mode on, notice how that's basically giving me the depth in here and you can adjust this up or down. So you can adjust that radius up or down depending on what you're trying to do. So if I bring that up and let's say I get closer to something. So you can see how this is almost like a clay render right here, but you can see the depth um, of these different spaces. And then if you combine that with outline mode like this, it just gives you some really interesting, um, it gives you some really interesting possibility for styles of renderings that you can create in here. Now, one thing I haven't done that sounds kind of interesting is I don't know, I don't think as long as these are on, um, your sun doesn't really cast shadows or anything like that. So I think that effect is kind of like a wiping those out, but this is still a really interesting way to be able to create more stylized renderings out of um, your out of your detailed renderings in here. And then you could save this as a scene as well. So I could just click on the plus button right here. And then I can just toggle between um, the stylized renderings like this and the regular renderings like this. So they've also added a tool that you can use to simulate thickness of glass for single-sided glass materials. So if you have like single thickness glass in here, the way the light is rendered is going to look a little bit different, um, but if you use that toggle, it's going to simulate your glass having thickness and you're gonna get a more realistic result. So if you are doing any kind of glass rendering with a, a single-sided piece of glass, this tool could be really helpful in making that more realistic. So there's actually a fairly ridiculously long list of other features that are in here. So things like adding manual focus for the depth of field effect um, so that you can do manual focusing on that, syncing your pivot point from your modeling software. So that could definitely be helpful for movement. Um, one that I'm interested in. So there's a couple things having to do with animation. So there's animation control for dynamic models now, meaning that you have a control for your dynamic models that allow you to customize like your play mode and other things for the animated models that are inside of the D5, inside of the D5 library. So they've added some additions to the vehicle path. So things like random colors for cars, um, toggling car lights on and off, as well as path tools for animal models. So you can have walking animals in your scenes right now. And then one that I'm really interested in, they've also done some things with decals and the way that they stack. Um, but one that I'm really interested in and I need to play around with a little bit more. And so one other thing that's really interesting to me is they have optimized support for ABC files for the Olympic files. And uh, basically what that allows you to do is import complex animation files into D5. So this is something I haven't really done anything with, but I'm super interested. Um, 
um, because if you can bring in animated files, that's going to give you more functionality than I've seen in most other rendering programs. So overall, I would recommend that you go to this site right here and read through all of the different things they've added. They've got additional assets and uh, just a ton of different stuff in here. So D5 renders probably um, moving as fast as any rendering program that I've seen right now. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. All right, so leave a comment below. I would love to hear what you think about D5 Render, if you've tried it, if you're excited to see where it's going. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.